Hi, good to see you, I'm Max, and in this video, and this is actually the first video um, in a brand new series where we will talk about token economics on Cardano. And in this video, we will specifically talk about why burning tokens in your protocol doesn't make sense. Now, before we start, please make sure to follow us on YouTube. 72% of you guys aren't following us and are still watching our videos, which is absolutely um, horrible. Uh, it's just what, what a world we live in, right? Uh, so <laughs> please, please do follow us on YouTube. Uh, that will help us a lot and you will be able to follow us and to watch our daily videos about Cardano and not miss any one of them. So first, what is burning actually? Well, burning tokens means that you are essentially removing tokens uh, from the supply and essentially making them disappear. Uh, most of the time, this is done by basically either either there is um, uh, some function in the contract of the token which automates that, or uh, it's simply done by essentially sending the tokens to an address which is known to not uh, being owned by anyone. Uh, and, and in the Ethereum ecosystem, they do that often by sending it to 0x0000, because it's, it's just an empty address, essentially, and no one owns it. And so, and you will see that that address contains a ton of tokens, which essentially have been burned. Um, so that's burning. It's re simply removing tokens from the supply and making them disappear. Now, how are burning mechanisms traditionally implemented? Now, the reason why people find burning mechanisms attractive is because, well, there is less supply, right? So the existing token holders now have, they, they still have the same amount of money, but that money is, is scarce, is more scarce now, right? It doesn't make it more valuable, by the way. It doesn't make it more valuable, uh, or at least not directly. Indirectly, it does, but not directly. Um, now, re regarding how they're traditionally implemented, burning, burning mechanisms are often implemented in either to punish bad actors. So, you know, if you, if, if you look at, for example, um, I don't know, uh, Numerai, uh, Numerai, which is a, a protocol in Ethereum, and which is essentially, uh, I guess, a decentralized hedge fund, and essentially, you can run um, uh, machine learning models for them, which will predict the future stock prices of the stock markets. And based on that, you will either be rewarded or you will lose NMR tokens, which essentially will be burned. Um, and so the higher... Um, the, the Essentially, on a long-term perspective, there will be a ton of NMR tokens which will disappear because obviously there will also be a ton of bad predictions. Um, and so th th that's one way of doing things. Another way is, um, it's for example saying, well, okay, uh, protocol A generated, for example, $10 million in, in revenues. Well, 20% of the revenues of the protocol will be burned to benefit all the token holders. That's something which is also uh, done sometimes. Um, so these are the two ways burning mechanisms are often implemented. So it's, it's, it's essentially either punishing or rewarding. That's just a way you have to look at it. Um, and now, why it just doesn't work? And the and, and reason why it, it, it just doesn't work is that there are two things to take into consideration. While it does remove a portion of the supply and, and so it does make on paper the what, what the existing token holders own more valuable um, in reality there is a major problem with that and, and the major problem is that when you have a protocol and you have governance burning tokens means you are one making the protocol less accessible because you're reducing the supply 
which means less possible liquidity as the existing token holders are still holding a token. And so you have this kind of bad effects that you are making the protocol less accessible to new stakeholders. And additionally, you are also um, reinforcing the power of the existing token holder set on the protocol. And so it's kind of a system where it benefits the, the, the people who are the earliest to join the protocol. And you will tell me, well, this, is, this isn't bad, right? Because we are right now the earliest, like the people who are early in this case. Well, yes, but on a long-term perspective, it's not good because you are essentially um, re limiting the growth capacities of your protocol, mainly because you are, again, blocking the doors to new token holders. And additionally, if, if you take, for example, uh, if you take two of the scenarios uh, I, I, I gave before regarding the implementation of these burning mechanisms, so either by punishing people or by rewarding existing token holders, um, it would be much better, and this is this comes here actually, uh, it would be much better to use the, um, to essentially take these funds and reinvest them in the growth of the protocol, which could be decided, by the way, by the token holders but reinvest them in the growth of the poor call to allow um, the, uh, the, poor call to, the poor call to grow in a long-term perspective. Because what you're doing when you burn tokens as a poor call is you are essentially saying, okay, well, um, here is, like, take for example a company. <laughs> you, you will understand why it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Take for example a company. A company generates $1,000 of revenue. And to benefit all the token holders, the company will now throw away $200 uh, in the garbage can. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, uh, why not? Well, it's ridiculous. It's $200, which you could have used to reinvest in the poor call. And while this example is not really perfect, because in this case, $200, well, no, it's kind of like, it's like you had 200 uh, $200, 200 tokens in this case, uh, because it's not the, same, the exact same thing. But it's the, what I mean is the fact that you are essentially throwing away possible investments, essentially, in the future of the poor call. And that makes it really ridiculous. And so while, I, while burning is often, while burning tokens is often seen as something which is great and wow and cool and 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 it's going to make us all rich <laughs> i'll show the perspective at the end of the day what will drive the tokens price up is utility 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 it's not reducing the supply right i i i, I can i can create a token tomorrow and i can start with 10 billion tokens and then whoa let, let's let's halve it right let's remove 5 billion tokens out of the circulation and let's burn them all well, my token will still be worthless <laughs> not going to change a single thing um, so, burning tokens in my opinion is is the result of a very um, speculation focused crypto community uh, and in my opinion it really doesn't make sense if you are building a protocol on a long-term perspective, and especially if you are investing in a protocol, it doesn't make sense to invest in a protocol which which has burning mechanisms implemented, or at least on a wide scale, um, simply because it's just essentially cash flow which you just throw away. That that's just how awesome it is. It, it's in my opinion, it really doesn't make sense. So what you need to remember is that burning tokens doesn't make sense. That's it. If you like this video, please share it. Please share it with your friends, neighbors, family, dogs, cats. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of other people you could share it with. It, but you know, um, please like the video. Please follow us on Twitter and on YouTube. Please uh, comment on the video. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me why. Uh, burning is really great. Tell me why I'm totally wrong. And, uh, and yeah, please stay constructive and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.